Okay, well here's a good problem, an enzyme problem that, you know, you might see where you're going to use enzyme kinetics and, and the understanding of the previous videos that we covered. Um, the question says, the statin drug, lovastatin, helps lower cholesterol levels by acting as a competitive inhibitor on the HMG-CoA reductase enzyme, which normally catalyzes an early step in the biosynthesis pathway of cholesterol. Okay, that's a whole lot of information, but the only real important thing here from this whole bit of information here is not that it's a statin drug and that lowers cholesterol, but that it is a, if we can see this, I'm going to underline it a little bit here, it's a competitive inhibitor, okay? And what do we know about competitive inhibitors? We know that they have a higher KM, but the same Vmax, okay, because you can overcome the inhibition by adding more substrate. Increase the concentration of su substrate, overcome competitive inhibition, okay? So what the question wants us to do, actually, and what the important part here is, on a single graph, sketch the michaelis mentin plot for HMG-CoA reductase in the presence and absence of lovastatin, clearly labeling the KM and the Vmax. Okay, very easy question. Perfect kind of question you want. This is the kind of thing you want to see on your exam. Okay, so we label our axis. Remember the y-axis is substrate concentration. That's what the brackets mean. If you ever see these brackets, you've probably seen them in general chemistry. What that means is concentration. So that's concentration of substrate, and that's our direction scaling. And this up here, I'll just label velocity. Okay, simple, no big deal. Now, if this enzyme, HMG-CoA reductase, is working the way it should be working, then what we know about it is it's going to have, you know, kind of this hyperbolic shape to it, okay? So something like that, right? And we know that this point up here, if I had to label it up here, this is going to be our Vmax, okay? That's going to be our Vmax. And that's with, and this would be right here, this would be no inhibitor. So no inhibitor, okay? So that's with no inhibitor. Now, if we add this competitive inhibitor, we know, we know one thing. We know it's eventually going to reach this Vmax here, okay? But it's going to just essentially be flattened out a little more approaching that spot, okay? So it will maybe look something like that. Eventually it's going to reach the same position, okay? Eventually it's going to get to the same spot. Now the question asks us to also label, so I already labeled the Vmax, and they're both going to have the same Vmax. So, you know, this point over here is the Vmax. I'm not going to bother labeling another one. Now if I want to label the Km just intuitively, we know that the Km, right? Remember, recall, Km is equal to one-half Vmax, okay? Km is equal to one half B max. So roughly I'm going to say that's about half right there. And then I'm going to just drop my line down here just like that with a dotted arrow and I'm going to say Km. Okay, now I should have probably also said that this one in orange here is with inhibitor. Okay, with inhibitor. Alright. And that Vmax is going to be, I mean, rather, Km is going to be further, okay? Remember, the Km increases. Why does the Km increase? Because we're, we have some inhibitor competing with the substrate at the active site for binding to the active site. So the Km is going to increase. It's going to require more substrate to reach the same one-half Vmax level, okay? So that's how you would answer that part of the question. Now let's go to the next part. Okay. It says on a single graph, sketch the line weaver burke double reciprocal plot for HMG-CoA reductase in the presence and absence of lovastatin, clearly indicating how you could determine KM, KCAT, Vmax. Okay, so they want to know, they, they essentially want us to do the same thing. Now they just want us to draw the linear version of the graph, which is known as a line weaver burke plot. And recall, the y-axis is 1 over v, okay? And this x-axis over here is 1 over s, okay? So 1 over s, right? Recall those things, that's important to remember, right? 
So I'm just going to kind of arbitrarily draw this because they're, they're not giving us any particular values. We don't know for sure where this is going, but we do know this. We know that this is going to be no inhibitor, okay? Okay, no inhibitor, all right? The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to draw my inhibited. And remember, the KM is going to increase. So we're going to have something like this. We're going to cross at the same spot because we're going to have the same Vmax. And we're going to say that this is width. And I'm just going to say width, okay? That's width inhibitor. Now, it's asking us to determine where the KM and where the Vmax is. Okay. Well, for the, for the no inhibitor, that's going to be right here. And that's going to be known as negative 1 over KM, okay? That's, remember, that's how it's done. It's double reciprocal plot. Okay, the same thing over here, negative 1 over KM. That's going to be the spot, that's going to be the, how we would calculate the KM with inhibitor. All right, and recall, the, remember I said the most important thing about any of these graphs when it comes to asking you, especially about an, a competitive inhibitor, okay, is that the Vmax is the same. And there it is. They cross the same point on the y-axis, and that point is known as 1 over Vmax, okay? 1 over Vmax, and that's how you could calculate that as well. And if you had numbers, this would be very easy to get. Just divide whatever you get by 1, okay? To get your answer. All right, so it also asks us about what's known as the KCAT. Okay, so what is this KCAT? All right, this is another common thing. KCAT, I believe I described it in a previous video, not as the KCAT. I think I used a different term for it. But it's, it's also known as the turnover. I use the turnover number. I like turnover number better because I think it's more intuitive as to what it's actually doing. Um, and that's the number of reactions uh, a per the number of reactions one active site of an en of the enzyme can catalyze per unit time. Okay, so if I were if I were asked to calculate that, I would say the KCAT is equal to the Vmax over the total concentration of enzyme. So the KCAT is equal to Vmax over the total concentration of enzymes. So you might be saying to me at this point, okay, where can I go with that? It doesn't help me at all because I don't know what the total concentration of the enzyme is. Well, you might be able to get away with just this and do, give a little explanation for this particular problem where it says, you know, how you could determine the, K, the KCAT. Well, this is how you could determine the KCAT. You could simply get the Vmax from the graph over here and maybe be given the enzyme total the total enzyme concentration added, that's a possibility, okay? But I was told you could approximate this. Now, I don't want anybody to quote me on this because this was something my instructor said to me um, a long time ago about this. And for the purposes of this, of, of an introductory biochemistry class, this seemed to be okay. But you could approximate this as the Vmax over the KM, okay? Now again, I don't want anybody to say, you know, what are you crazy? How could you do that? That's not true. Again, I'm not even definitely sure about it. I know one thing. The KCAT is definitely equal to the Vmax over the total enzyme substrate. I mean, the total enzyme, com the total enzyme concentration, okay? This is an approximation. Can it be used? Well, if, if we wanted to use it here, we would have the things we need to use it because we could get the KM and we could get the Vmax, so we could essentially get the KCAT. Okay? But I, I'm, I'm not definite about it. I just wanted to put it out there and see if it's helpful. Okay?